It's no secret that I know a thing or two about Unity's data oriented technology stack, but I still don't know everything and I still get questions that I just don't have the answers to. So I did what any sane person would do and I traveled to a foreign country to meet with the man with the answers and my favorite entity, Laurent Gibert. But there's just one problem with that. I've never actually been outside the United States before. Seriously. So back a couple years ago when foreign travel basically shut down globally, it made me actually want to go out and get my passport because I knew that when things started opening back up, I really wanted to actually go to travel to cool different places around the world. So now that things have started opening back up, all I really needed was just an excuse to get out of the country. And if I could somehow make dots that excuse, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And so this is a story about how I traveled to Montreal in Quebec, Canada to meet up with Laurent Gibert to ask him some questions about Unity's data-oriented technology stack. Hope you enjoy it. So anyways, this trip starts off as any trip does by packing my bags with my most important things and then waking up at the crack of dawn at 4.30 in the morning on October 31st and heading straight off to the airport and then realizing about five minutes into the drive that I forgot my headphones and yes, I had to turn around to get my headphones because you can't go on a flight without headphones, come on. So anyways, made it to the airport and checked in no problem with plenty of time to spare, which did give me a few moments to catch up on some YouTube comments for my ECS 1.0 tutorial video. Definitely go check that out if you haven't already, by the way. Anyways, our plane pulls up right around sunrise and I was lucky enough to get a window seat on the plane to capture this really cool parallel takeoff with a jet blue plane as we're flying out of San Francisco International National Airport. And while we admire the marvels of modern aviation, I do have a bit of a secret to tell you. While I am playing it up a bit for the video, and yes, this is actually my first time outside the United States, I didn't actually just fly to Montreal to ask a few questions to Laurent about DAS just on a whim. However, Unity actually decided to host their first Unite event since 2019, and while this was a global event with things happening in each office, they flew a bunch of us creators like myself to the Montreal office for the event. So a major thank you to Cal and his team at Unity for organizing this so we could all get together and just experience Unite uh, in person once again. It was such an amazing experience and I'm really just incredibly grateful that Unity decided to fly me out for this awesome event. So anyways, flight landed and I had to check into customs and didn't really know what that was gonna be like. Again, first time being outside the country. Luckily, it was pretty easy. They kind of have the process mostly automated. You kind of go to a little computer, type in some things, fill some things out. Then you go up and talk to the border agent, give them a little bit of information about why you're there. And ultimately, it was a fairly painless process. I was able to get in pretty smoothly. Then I hopped onto a bus and started traveling to the hotel. And the next thing I noticed was that all the street signs looked you know, pretty much exactly the same as that I'm familiar with. However, I couldn't understand any of them because they're all written in French. So that was something that really stuck out to me. I knew that Montreal was kind of a bilingual type city, but I didn't realize how like actually French dominated it was. Um, didn't really have any problems about getting around. You know, most people were pretty much bilingual and were able to speak to me in English, no problem. So anyways, I got to the hotel and had an opportunity to meet up with some of the creators who had already arrived and some of the Unity folks there. Um, so it was definitely good to just kind of like finally meet up with some of them in person for the first time and just kind of get to know each other a little bit uh, before the big day at Unite, which was the next day. So anyways, we get to the Unity offices for Unite and they have kind of some breakfast ready for us. So we kind of were able to catch up with each other just a little bit before the keynote presentation which they displayed on the screens there. If you haven't seen it already, I would highly recommend going to check out the keynote presentation that is as it is live on YouTube now. Um, talk about a lot of cool things, you know, some things related to dots, but most of the things, just other things, cool things about the Unity game engine. It's a very game development focused keynote. So if you are into game development, which most of you probably are, I would definitely recommend checking it out. I'm sure there are a ton of cool things that you'll find in there. You know, a couple of standout things to me are some of the VR things. I think it's really cool that they now have a standard XR interaction toolkit just right out of the box in Unity. And they're also showcasing some really beautiful things with HDRP, specifically when it comes to like environment rendering, which I think is gonna be really awesome for specific types of games like that. And there was a good chunk of the keynote dedicated to Dots, and I'll let Will Goldstone go ahead and introduce the speaker to that. For the latest on Dots, please welcome our favorite entity himself, Monsieur Laurent Gibert. That's right, our favorite entity, Laurent Gibert, was there to talk about the latest and greatest for DOTS. Really, the big announcement here is that DOTS is going to be exiting the experimental phases as part of the 2022.2 tech stream, which is set to become in a full release later this year. So this means that now DOTS is officially supported through the you know, official Unity support channels, which is very exciting stuff. 
you know, definitely getting closer and closer to that 1.0 production ready release, which is still set to happen when the 2022 version of the editor goes into this LTS cycle. So after the keynote, we attended a session where they talked about some of the new features coming to the 2022.2 tech stream, just to kind of give a status update on everything. And then after that was the moment that I've been waiting for that I traveled across the globe for, uh, the DOTS Q&A session with Laurent. Basically, he just kind of went over what is the data oriented technology stack, kind of who it is targeted for, and then basically just opened up the floor to questions. And of course, <laughs> I grabbed the mic first because I had a whole list of questions that I wanted to ask, uh, both for me personally and some questions that I opened up to the Discord. So real quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and run through the questions that I asked and just kind of give a general overview about the responses that I received. So first I asked about the DOTS packages being open source because of course right now the package Packages are basically open for us to view and if we want we can go ahead and actually make modifications to the packages if we you know really need for some extra configuration and they do you know very much see some value in having the packages open source so we can you know again learn from them and also modify them to our needs so that is the plan to continue to keeping uh, the you know source open for us to basically view and modify however we can't of course you know package it up and redistribute it as our own type of thing then I asked him to clarify the havoc physics license because it was kind of seeming a little bit wishy-washy about how you know it's not really available in the um, ECS 1.0 experimental fruit preview phases, but as we get into the you know production ready phases, we will see it uh, be available to us again. Um, however, the one big thing to note is that Havoc Physics is only going to be available on the professional and enterprise versions of the Unity Editor. If you're running anything less than that, so that would be the personal or plus editions of Unity, you cannot use the Havoc Physics package when DOTS goes into 1.0 production. And unfortunately, there is not going to be a way, at least as of right now, where you can purchase an additional license just for Havoc specifically. So if you are using Havoc Physics for your game, you will need to get a professional or enterprise license of the Unity Editor. I also asked about cross-platform determinism as it comes to the Unity Physics and Havoc Physics engines, and if there's any you know, plans on working towards full cross-platform deterministic simulations. And the answer is yes, that is actually an end goal that they are trying to achieve. Um, and actually I did get a little bit more insight about kind of the technical reasons of why this is the way that it is right now. And it doesn't actually have anything specifically to do with the Unity Physics or Havoc Physics packages but rather it's with the Burst compiler. So the Burst compiler right now, this is also um, not necessarily cross-platform deterministic because of you know, variations in how CPUs process things. However, cross-platform determinism for the Burst compiler is an end goal that they're actively working towards. And basically once that's resolved, then cross-platform determinism should follow through to the physics packages as well. Unfortunately, they weren't able to give me kind of any insights into you know, how close they are to achieving this or if there's any kind of you know, estimated timeline of when we will see this, uh, but that's basically kind of the main reason for that right now. I also did ask if there are any plans to have any 2D specific tool sets for any of the DOS things, and they said that that's not really something they're focused on right now. They really seem to indicate that they're focusing most of their resources right now on all the 3D things because that's you know going to be the most beneficial towards the most people for games and simulations um, that can really take advantage of DOS. Um, of course, they're very much open to feedback. So if you do have any you know specific reasons about you know why you want some uh, you know 2D specifically made tool sets for Unity's dots, you know definitely make your voices heard in the forums as well as the roadmap page. Um, so that will just kind of give them a little bit more information that you know you do want these tool sets available to you. And then finally, I asked about the new translation system as it relates to the physics and netcode packages because as of right now, these are not compatible with the new translation system that was released. In 1.0 and of course they are working towards you know getting those things ready there wasn't necessarily an estimated time on when those things will be ready but it does sound like that they are planning on having that out pretty soon so I'm hoping that that's going to be ready when ECS exits the experimental phases and then comes out with the 2022.2 tech stream which should happen later this year but if not we'll definitely have it by the time um, ECS is production ready 1.0. Then after that, we had some time to kind of hang out with the other creators and talk about, you know, some of the things that we're working on and just kind of, you know, talk a little bit about some kind of content strategy and stuff like that. You know, really wish you had more time to do that because all the people that I talked to were just, 
you know, very brilliant and knowledgeable in their field. But anyways, yeah, Unite 2022 was really just an excellent trip. Um, went by way too fast because I ended up flying out Wednesday evenings, just a little over two days, and I'm already back in the United States. But I can say that first time traveling internationally, even though it's, you know, basically right next door to the United States, uh, was a very positive experience. You know, maybe next time I'll be flying to another continent or something like that. Um, so definitely looking forward to doing some more international traveling. Definitely looking forward to the next event where us all creators can get together and hang out with each other and some other Unity folks because that was just such a good time. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap up today's video. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Hope y'all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.